you need somebody who can speed up from the side of the court to beat Ben and Colin. You can't speed up at him through the, from the middle of the court. You need to have a little bit of an angle to, to work with. Jack can create that by running around his, his backhand. And I think James can create that just by rolling his backhand. So, Who would be Jack's like perfect partner, ideal partner? All right. Welcome to the Pickle Pod. I'm here with Rafa Nadal, a.k.a. Carlos Delora and Jack Monroe. Welcome, boys. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Uh, first repeat guest. Did the people ask for it? Nobody has. No, for absolutely it. nobody asked for it. But people did absolutely love the Analiaguas line. Yeah. I mean, All people didn't understand it, but yeah. Well, uneducated people, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason didn't understand it. Oh no! It took Jason until he had no idea. What he was probably going still on. to this moment doesn't know what that joke was. Not a chance. But before we get too far into it, Jack, you know this is uh, you know there's video on this, right? You want to put a hat on before we start, or no? I thought I was gonna get a cut, but <laughs> can I touch it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is, probably sounds really weird <laughs> to the people who aren't. I hope aren't not on video. <laughs> <laughs> touch it. I'm gonna moment. Wow. So. Okay. It's real, everybody. It's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> well, um, thanks for popping on, boys. We'll talk about, uh, I want to I get to know Jack a little bit more. We all know Carlos way too much already, but he's doing some cool stuff in, in Pickleball here in Austin. But uh, first and foremost, we have a press release as of today from, uh, from our friends over at, at ProXR. Um, so January 16th, 2024. 35 Capital, a family office and private equity firm focused on sports technology and innovation companies, today announced the creation of United Pickleball Paddles, a subsidiary of their global pickleball investment sleeve. The initial three paddle brands coming together under UPP are Paddletech, ProXR Pickleball, and Boundless Pickleball, um, which is pretty sweet. Like, to be able to have multiple different brands under one um umbrella is i think enormous and i think it's a testament to to the vision that all three of these companies share right obviously paddle tech has been around forever and they've been super innovative uh throughout the years my first real pickleball paddle was a a paddle tech element back in like you remember oh yeah you're an og (laughs) you remember the paddle tech element Bro, that was my first paddle too. I got pictures winning like some 4-0 tournaments with that yellow element. Yeah. Uh, yes, that was like the most, one of the most elite paddles. That one, the Bantam, mm-hmm. one that Kyle Yates rocked for a few years. Uh, bro, Paddle Tech was ahead of the game at least when it started out. There was that, Selkirk, Engage. That was pretty much it. For sure. So that was your first, that was your first paddle when you started? Yeah, yeah. I had like a, I had a striker a striker paddle. I don't think striker even makes paddles or they got sold or something. I had a striker that I bought from the Cedar Chavez Center in Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> it was at least not made out of wood. And then I graduated to the to the yellow paddle tech element. Which was like that was the that was like the most groundbreaking paddle. I don't even remember what was like new about it, but it was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they showed they had like a clear section where it showed the honeycomb mm-hmm. right inside of it. Yeah. It was it was so sick. All right, you with that paddle today, what what are you rated? Uh I mean, see that paddle is is still really solid. Like it's got good power, it's got good feel, it's got good control. But the innovations and spin right. since there then is if you're somebody who didn't doesn't play with a lot of spin, you could use that paddle on the right. tour right now. If you want spin, that is not the paddle. So <laughs> Ben, if you give Ben a month with that to practice. I mean, you give Ben a month. You give you give Ben any paddle. He's gonna be good enough. He's. Just, I mean, like a semifinal team with Collins still. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I th- bro, I think he could. Yeah, I don't think he's beaten Riley and Thomas, but I think he's still beating most of the teams that, you know, I think the teams that'll that might beat him with that would be like the JW and Dylan. Riley and and Thomas, um, 
Fed and Pablo would would uh, would would give him a good run. Best three teams. That's semifinals. <laughs> that's semi yeah, I don't. Still the same. Yeah, there. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Um, but uh, that's pretty sweet. We have a we have a quote in here from from Anna Lee. Paddle Tech has been making the best paddles for me and my family for years. I'm so excited to see them become a part of UPP and build on the Paddle Tech le- legacy. Said Anna Lee Waters, the PPA's number one ranked player in the world. So. People know about ProXR at this point. People know about PaddleTech, of course. But the uh, the unknown of this um, sort of merger is Boundless Pickleball. And so Boundless Pickleball is a... I'll just read it here. Adds fun, customizable, and NCAA licensed products to the UPP family. So they're going with... Um, oh, wow, look at that. There's even a quote from, from Jack Monroe in here. I didn't even realize that. Students, alumni, parents, and professionals love showing school pride out on the courts and appreciate the high quality yet reasonable prices. When I go to the courts on campus, the Longhorn paddles are everywhere, according to pro pickleball player and University of Texas club pickleball founder, Jack Monroe. Wow. They let anybody found a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you tell us, tell us a little bit about Boundless? Are you involved with Boundless or like... Yeah, how does what's your relationship like with uh with with that? Yeah, so that's spot on. They spun off of ProXR and they're going for that more customizable, creative type. Um, say the younger demographic, college kids in specific, for their school. So they're licensing the logos from UT and then putting that on a paddle, Michigan, all of this stuff, and it's obviously way more affordable. And that's what Boundless is going to be like, for sure. So it's it's actually perfect with. Uh, my club at UT Austin with Longhorn Pickleball because the kids eat that up. They love it. They love having some sort of patriotism towards like just their logo on a paddle. So they go travel with it and all that stuff and actually, you know, have that as well as a shirt and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Carlos, we'll we'll get to your quote a little bit later. I don't I don't see one in here, but um, I think it was in the Spanish article. It was in the Spanish, yeah, the Spanish press release. On, it was on Telemundo. <laughs> but I don't know if you have access to that. Um, but I think, you know, there are so many paddle brands. Like I think last year there were some crazy amount of people got their, their paddles certified by USA Pickleball. So I mean I think it makes sense that there's some um consolidation and I think there's probably more of that to to come. So mm-hmm, yeah. And that's the thing you need like with all the paddle brands, you need it you need to find a niche, which is exactly what Boundless did like the younger demographic rather than like in terms of pickleball in general, college pickleball is so untapped. Mm -hmm. So kind of full court pressing into that niche in specific is what you should do when you have a paddle company rather than trying to appeal to just simply everyone. Right. Yeah. They're going to keep, they're going to keep these different companies under their sort of distinct brand rather than merging them all under one name. ProXR is going to be ProXR. Um, Paddle Tech is going to be Paddle Tech and Boundless is going to be Boundless. And they're basically just going to share like, you know, a factory uh, distribution. They're going to share some of those fixed costs across the the three different brands. They're going to have one, you know, an HR person for for the entire thing, which is which is good when you got people like me and Carlos working with ProXR. <laughs> got to have a strong HR department. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, All right. So... Uh, I want to dive in a little bit to to getting to know Jack a little bit more, which is wild because Jack is like one of the OGs of pickleball. When did you start playing? Oh my. I started when I was 10, which is gnarly because pickleball was legitimately an old person sport back then. Like, um, So I started when I was 10. I played for two, three years, and then I, I traveled a bit. That was like my sport during that time and then as soon as high school hit I played high school basketball for four years turns out I'm not LeBron in case you haven't noticed um were you good at basketball I mean I was the best six man in the league Mike (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah I mean then after that basketball stopped and then bang back to pickle where all the washed up tennis players go that's right (laughs) that's right just like Carl that leads right (laughs) into Carl (laughs) right in in. (laughs) oh (laughs) That's true. I remember I remember when I was first starting out, I didn't really play 
anything outside of um outside of like Wisconsin and you know some Illinois and stuff but I was playing with Dave Weinbach who was going all across the country and I think you did I think he did really, really well at like a nationals, right? Mm-hmm. Did you did you win a national? Oh, I was the first triple crown back in the day. <laughs> no way. No, it was it was juniors, so obviously it's like twelve to sixteen. Yeah, no, that doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I played, and I remember after a tournament that I did really, really well, and Dave actually came up to me, and he was like, "Yo, like we should win a tournament next year." <laughs> and I was so, so stoked for it. It was like I no joke couldn't sleep for the night. It ever happened. No, it never happened. Wow. I went back to basketball, but it was, I remember that moment like it was yesterday. That's pretty big. Yeah, big the Badger. The Badger yeah. was the uh, was a goat back yeah. then. He ran it with Kyle. Um, I don't, do you remember? There, there's a lot of OG names. Obviously, you know, um, you know, a few of them. Because when did you start? I started, I started in 2013, but I didn't really play any pro stuff. And I didn't play it super seriously until like 2019 yeah. let's rattle off some ogs bro you got matt goble okay yeah best forehand flick <laughs> well, you, really? this guy could do very little but had the nastiest <laughs> forehand speed up like the dude gets a four any good hands yeah. right he just kind of like made balls other than that he didn't do anything special on on the dinks but this guy he really sort of pioneered the that drop the paddle head down and just flick the uh, flick the paddle up you could not read where his speed up was going and it was it was money mm-hmm. yes i remember i was so scared of that um there's obviously kyle yates uh mr nasty nelson yeah mm-hmm. uh, uh, did you ever how many times did you play against timothy nelson i think only in rec only in rec um, just a few times and then there's zane affleck well hold on that what's uh What's what's uh what's Timothy Nelson like? Um, it wasn't much. It wasn't much talking. To be fair, I had I'd never developed a close relationship with him because obviously, as you know, he's pretty like shy or off the grid for the most part. Is he? Um, I I'd, I've never talked to at least, Nelson. At least in the, the tournament settings that it was. Maybe I wasn't good enough. To be fair, um, <laughs> did he hit you with the puppet master ever? <laughs> does, does, does he do all in rec play? Oh, he's got to not not when I played because keep in mind I was like twelve. Sure. So he wasn't out there, Lord. He wasn't out there like dunking on twelve year olds. Damn, I thought this guy was a savage. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for sure, I remember sitting courtside and seeing him do it. It was, it was so good back then. So I was gonna bring that back. The puppet master. Yeah. Surprised you haven't done it. I did do it. Oh, you did. I did against against Ben and in uh, in where were we in San Clemente? I had one point where I like I drop shot it. I loved, and then I think I drop shot it again. And I was <laughs> master. And to be fair, it was a pretty good puppet master yeah, yeah. point. It just looked like you're dancing, <laughs> like the Trump dance, bro. Um, we need to bring more sellies back, bro. Like I want to do more sellies, except I don't want the reputation of, you know, the the sellie guy. guy. No, why? Why not? If Who you cares? Could, yeah, you're playing pickleball. <laughs> Carlos is the most underrated shit talker there is. Probably. Yeah, you really need to. You Especially if you're on, if you're on the court. Nah, I think I bring we bring out the the worst in each other. <laughs> yeah, 100%. we do. Hundred percent, we do. But yeah, I mean, I like to show talk. Why not? It's nothing personal. It just makes it more fun. What if it is personal? Oh, I never get personal unless this was Zane. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll mention everyone in his family. <laughs> um, I think it's it's interesting. In pickleball, pretty much everybody knows everybody, right? Yeah. So you know who you can shit talk to, and you also know who, like, okay, yeah, don't, don't mess with this person. Yeah, it's almost it's almost easier to shit talk someone that you know well, rather than like, if it's my first time meeting someone, unless they piss me off first, I'm not gonna go out of my way to like first impression. I'm gonna shit talk you, you know, and like, you're gonna run into them five minutes after, mm-hmm. so you, you can't go too far. <laughs> yeah, I remember you and Wyatt Stone going out at Natty's. Yeah, yeah, but that's, I'm friends with Wyatt, so I can tell him anything. Oh, yeah, and your dad, you're his daddy too. I am his daddy. Yeah. Um. All right. Who else? Who else are some of the the best memories that we might have forgotten about in uh, in pro pickleball right now? Oh my! Um, you mentioned Zane Affleck. Zane we, we've, Affleck. We've, we've we've talked about Zane Affleck. Is he the original a Zane? Bunch. He was the original Zane when I first came in and started playing. <laughs> people called me 
Baby Zane. <laughs> no way. For, it was mostly just Adam Stone. I never really cared for that. <laughs> Baby that Zane. <laughs> he's like, oh, is he way older than you? No, he's not that much older than me. <laughs> that, he's probably like, that's tough. he's probably like early 30s, maybe. Uh, yeah, he was young. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was young. I remember film. He was, he, 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 he was doing like the, the Lee Waters or the, the Lee Whitwell type Ernie's and mm-hmm. getting away with it. Like, <laughs> he was just running straight through the kitchen <laughs> and earning and the ref was just, the refs were so naive back then. Yeah. It's crazy. All right. We got Zane. Who else are, are some of those OGs? Um, Obviously, Callan was an OG, mm-hmm. but there's Callan's brother, which was Tyler. Tyler, and then the parents, which were the powerhouse back mm-hmm. then. We got Steve and Jennifer Dawson. They were, I think Steve still plays, but for the most part, he's running like running stuff at this point. Um, they were some good ones. Hmm. I wish I knew all these people. Just getting into pickleball like so late, you just kind of missed out on like all the OGs. Yeah, pickleball was was wild back in the day like there were a lot of characters <laughs> yeah i bet there were a lot of characters i mean to pick it up that early i always wonder like how these people even started you know like you you just saying that you played pickleball in 2013 is wild to me mm-hmm. that seems like so i mean more than 10 years ago yeah it's crazy it's, yeah i wonder how the other people how did you 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 picked it up because you uh you got hurt playing baseball or something or mm-hmm. with your barbies or what <laughs> 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 yeah, I played baseball for like six, seven years and then threw my arm out. And so then my dad was up at the local courts hitting and I watched him. And after he was done, I was like, yo, can I hit with you? And he's like, of course. So I started hitting and keep in mind, I was in my sling at the time. So I started hitting lefty and it felt so weird at first, but I was in love with just thinking around. And then I got hooked, never went back to baseball after that, thank God. And then as soon as I took the sling off, it felt better lefty, even though I'm naturally a righty. So I developed both at the same time. So that's why I'm amphibious. <laughs> amphibious. <laughs> uh, I, I was actually shocked like that when I first saw Jack play, probably like over a year ago, but like I was shocked when I found out you, you never played tennis. Because you, you, your, your strokes like are super clean. Like even like the way you dink now, like you're going two-handed and stuff, like it looks like if someone told me, oh yeah, he used to play tennis, I, I believe it. Other than the the T Rex limp on the <laughs> 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 um, so what uh, what made you decide to just call it for a little while? Do basketball only? Quit the pickleball stuff for a bit? Like he's getting bullied at school, probably for sure in middle school. <laughs> middle school, I got bullied. Well, dude, he's already got he's already got a, a dead ferret on his head. <laughs> no, I, I would have a I would have a field day with that. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, but um, whether I mean it was part part like social pressure uh from family and mostly mostly like family and then as well as me to you know have gain some social skills be a part of the high school environment get that high school experience and do like be part of a team there Mm -hmm. so it was cool because i mean do i regret like not playing it for four years and then being the next band and making a million (laughs) possibly (laughs) um but I mean, I learned like social skills and I mean, you could see like a bunch of the homeschooled kids that are playing pickleball. Um, sometimes they're a bit behind in that category. So, I mean, name them. Yeah. Who? <laughs> Who's assigned to talk socially? No English. <laughs> no English. <laughs> She's the only that can do that. <laughs> yeah. Not to name any names, but the couple of pro, pro pickleball players that were homeschooled. <laughs> um, so... What is it? I mean, not playing. Does that just mean not playing tournaments, or does that mean like not playing at all? Like you didn't pick up a paddle. Didn't pick up a paddle. Yeah, uh, like off season basketball, and then on season basketball. Damn. So you finish up high school. You finish up being a uh, uh, sixth man of the the year and <laughs> In the your, uh, the best sixth man of of your team. <laughs> and uh, and so obviously you're seeing over that course of time. 2020 2021 2022 like this is turning into a legit sport this wasn't the sport of 2013 like people are making real money like did you have FOMO or you know what uh what made you decide to get back into it all of a sudden so those four years was completely off the grid didn't even see a pickleball highlight on my phone nothing Really, you didn't know, you don't know anything about pickleball there. I wasn't that? watching you on the APP tour back then. <laughs> yeah, say it. But, uh, um, then, so I missed all the growing pains of 
you know, the first year of MLP, uh, the PPA, PP, all, all of that. And then um, after that, uh, just stopped playing basketball. So I was like, people all sick, played it back then. And so you're getting chunky. You're like, all right, I need to get, need, need to get in shape. Or that was a, that was actually a good part of basketball. It's basketball would be into shape and the bullying actually, um, really helped. So <laughs> <laughs> we're pro bowling. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, now I can grow my hair out and not have to worry about what you say. Did they, did they call you any fun nicknames when you were a little chunky? Yeah, bro. Well, I was pickle boy. Actually, <laughs> okay. pickle boy. Sorry. I'm, I'm that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I was a chunky one at grew. So <laughs> you could just you could just imagine what a bunch of high school. Oh yeah, tubby, <laughs> chunky. I'm gonna have- pickle boy isn't that bad. I was Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> so that's they'd make like, pickle jokes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know. Yeah, yeah. What What was your first tournament back? Was it that minor league duper thing? Um, no, it was five zero at the duper uh, PPA Newport. Okay. Right here. Yeah, because I remember like the first time I I heard your name, but the first time I watched you play was that my, the, that minor league at Dreamland, kind of mm-hmm. like the uh, the very first one they did, uh, where it was like open like twenty two duper or whatever, and it was like some teams had two girls, two guys, some teams had all four dudes. Yeah, that was yeah, that was gnarly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wait, what 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 did make you decide to get back into it? Like, what was just being done with basketball? You're like, I want something else to to do, basically. Yeah, so I knew for sure I wasn't going back to baseball. And then after basketball stopped, I went on the pickleball court and then just hooked. Okay. Like bug, got it, and then just played that. Yeah, wait, what, so what's the timeline there? You finish up basketball, and that's probably winter of, what, 2021? Yeah. Winter of 2021, but you're still in high school. Um, you decide that you're going to, you wanted to come to Austin. Now, did you decide that you wanted to come to, to Austin partially because of pickleball or just completely because you wanted to go to UT? It was, I would say, majority UT, to be mm-hmm. fair. Like, I wanted, I for sure wanted to be banker, MBA, and then work in or work up to senior uh, or VP at a private equity firm by the time I'm like 35. But then pickleball is like the best byproduct I could have asked for. Because now instead of working a day job, I am sitting doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now, to be fair, you did tell us last minute today. He's like, dude, I forgot I have class. I yeah. can't I can't make it at one o'clock. I got <laughs> class. My advisor told me I got to go to class. <laughs> so how's that uh, VP role <laughs> yeah. coming along? What, no, no, no. In all seriousness, like, what, uh, what are you studying at UT? Economics. Econ? So, okay. Yeah. The the original goal was to get in through economics because it's the liberal arts school. So the average GT, GPA to get in was like 3.2, 3.3. So it was like guaranteed admission. And then I could internally transfer to mm-hmm. this school of business. But now with pickleball, it's I, I think I'm just going to stay in line, get the econ degree, and then try to milk as much as I can out of pickleball. Mm-hmm. And what is that? What is that? What does the milking process look like? <laughs> Can you show us? <laughs> Off camera for sure. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, but you are you're cranking out uh, a ton of content. Um, you're welcome, obviously. But um, <laughs> how do you have time to how do you have time to do that? School travel for tournament. There are two two new clips a day from Jack. He's posting like yeah. You, how many times do you post per day? Well, my goal. At the beginning of last year, when I started, it was one post a day, and I've stuck to that. And now I'm trying to do one post a day, like plus a YouTube video. I'm trying to get into YouTube, um, and then maybe recycle my best performing reels. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, and balancing with school, do you find that as most of your classes in person? Uh, how are you able to balance it with school? Yeah, so like eighty. 80% of my classes are in person, which is miserable <laughs> because when you have a class on Friday, but mixed doubles is typically on Friday, then you have to work ways around it. Typically, you know, the, the lectures are recorded and stuff. Um, but yeah, I always have to talk to my professors and most of them are, you know, pretty helpful in letting me move around some stuff or uh, just hop on a Zoom call with me separately to teach me the content and stuff like that. So Do, well, like all the people in your class know that you're a pro pickle player. <laughs> is that something they ask? Um well, some of or them. Do you keep that on the low? I keep it on the low. <laughs> They're bringing back Pickle Boy for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
All right. So are you doing, are you running all your own content? Are you going to be editing your own YouTube videos and all that stuff too? Uh, likely in order to figure out what my like form or what my, what my editing style is. I sure. use those as, you know, drafts for my editor to use. Until you figure out what the style you want to have and then you can farm that out to, to editing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, sweet. Last question for you is like, what's the what are the plans for uh, for twenty twenty four? What are your who are your partners like, um, you know, on and off the court? Like, what are you up to? Uh, the biggest goal is to medal consistently. So in that regard, I feel like you should grabbing, do great at next gen. Grabbing a <laughs> <laughs> grabbing a good left side daddy like Zane Navratil yeah. cool. would be ideal. Um, but yeah, that and then off the court, um, content's going to be huge. Um, I think if I could have like a multifaceted approach where I can do content while leveraging that pro career in order to make my content better, um, I think content's going to be a huge avenue for sure. Um, Interesting. And then try to get that piece of paper. <laughs> nah, that's <laughs> that piece of paper. That's important. <laughs> um, but such an uncle thing to say. That piece of paper. Get that piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> that deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. nice what carlos you got to tell the people about the about the lab the lab if you want to yeah you can check out the sweatshirt right here at the lab east side austin um yeah it's a f- kind of fun project i'm doing in some warehouse space with uh my friend ryan dewidgen Pickleballed. if you don't follow him yeah i don't know who like ryan dewidgen is but Pickleballed. you only know him as Pickleballed, yeah 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 so pretty much uh, we're talking about it today, and he came up. It's it's a pro pickleball playground, really. Like we do, we we have done one court indoors that we're really proud of. Uh, really paying attention to detail, making it. We want to make it the best court to play on. You know, um, hopefully a lot of a lot of people get to see it, get to play on it. But really tailoring to like pros and also like just high level instruction people that you know want to experience a premier playing experience. Um, we started one court championship style. You know, plenty of room. We probably could have crammed two courts in there, but we, we want to take our time, make sure we have a good product. Um, and then eventually, maybe in like six months or so, we'll get maybe two or three more courts in the, the next warehouse. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, especially in Austin, I think it's huge to have a good indoor court. Even this week, we, we, we've noticed, you know, with the bad weather and everything, you know, no excuses. You can always get on the court. And, and also just, you know, kind of help out the pros in, in the area too. You know, it's 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 not not always easy having a court to train on um and where i feel like we're all good friends so i get to you know i get to hang out with you more zane mm-hmm. maybe <laughs> <laughs> no but uh yeah so we'll have a, like a little bar area hangout lounge uh we'll, we'll open it to you know for people to reserve the court this is the bar area for when jeff comes to town jeff warnick that's an og yeah, yeah. that's an og does he like the bar oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> start listing people that like the bar Start, who like the bar? <laughs> See after who, yeah yeah. Who are some people that she can catch at the bar after a, after a pickleball tournament? Joey Joey Farias. Really? I mean, like he's not somebody who's ever gonna get like trashed. But anytime you know there's the like yeah yeah. Anytime there's drinking after a pickleball event, Joey is involved. Joey Farias. Joey Farias was the first like pro pickleball player that I was like I recognize that name. I've known him since I was seven years old. Because uh, when, when I moved from Peru to the U.S., we moved to Corpus Christi first. My dad started a tennis academy, and one of his first students ever was Joey Farias. Oh, no way. Yeah, and now, you know what, 20 years later, uh, I, I get to see him like at APPs, and I'm like, dude, I've known you forever. Yeah? Such, such a good guy. Did he always, did he did he like to go, did he, did he party back then too, or what? Dude, I was seven years old. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did, though. Not much to do in Corpus Christi, so. Dude, well, yeah, we kind of get Joey on the pod at yeah, some point. He's, he's got the guy. he's got the most unbelievable stories. That guy's always good down for a good time afterwards. Never like he I've never seen him like just obliterated or anything. <laughs> but like if there is something going on after the pickleball tournament, Joey's there. there. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, Rob Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Rob Cassidy is down for a good time. Yeah. Danny Jensen. <laughs> Danny Jensen. I don't know him that well <laughs> for sure. Um, See, I feel like. I feel like eight, you would eight, not be at the bar. Mm-hmm. Oh no, absolutely not. I'd be asleep. <laughs> uh, Sherry, Sherry is well, the good time, obviously. Yeah. Let's see. AJ, AJ is usually good for a couple, a uh, couple of beers. Sure, I've never seen it, but I believe it. Yeah. Johnny's usually down for a beer. Johnny who? Sincola. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah. 
I've had a couple airport beers with him. Nice. Those are nice. Um. All right, so we got we got distracted about who who likes to party. Yeah, no one so. cares. <laughs> no one cares. How do you uh, how do you make how do you make money out of a out of a one court place that? Dude, uh, it's like the everyone's asking that. Um, we're not really doing it for the money. Uh, obviously, there's rent to be paid and everything that that will come with like court reservations and stuff. Um, sponsorships is going to be huge. You know, we want we want that court to be a, a main content court. Um, if, I feel like a lot of you know, they're like the classic content courts that you see in everyone's videos. I want our court to be one of those, and I think it has the potential to be. Um, so sponsorships will be big. And then after that, you know, we'll give lessons, clinics. Um, you know, hopefully our goal is to run some corporate events, maybe pro exhibitions. We have a lot of good pros in Austin. I feel like that'd be a great place for it. Um, but really, I mean, I work for ProXR. Uh, Ryan does a lot of, uh, consulting and pickleball and stuff like that. So we have our office space in there while, you know, getting to look at the court. Um, it's not, not a bad, not a bad gig. So really the money, like we, we just want a good product and then the money will, will come. It's, but it's not our main priority. We just want to offer something good, you know, in, in pickleball. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I feel like when we have the three other courts, you know, then you can start doing memberships and, and build a little community. Um, mm -hmm. Are the other couple courts gonna be outside? No, they'll be it'll be indoors. Oh, okay. In like the 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 next door warehouse. So we, we, the one we share a wall with. Yeah. On that side, we can put some in there. Sweet. So it'll be a nice little training facility. Even over to the even over to the lab. What once or twice? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is. You, <laughs> I'm so glad that y'all nailed the courts. Yeah, yeah, there are a bunch of indoor courts where you can tell that they just slacked around. Yeah. The surface. Yeah, and and we, we have a goal of like making sure it's like resurfaced pretty often. Uh, to the point where you know we want to have a good court um there are a lot of challenges that we've learned even getting a court built you know like just the preparations key and like no matter how good your court is eventually it, it's going to start cracking and and little stuff like that that you can't really control but um it's just a learning process and i mean we're both if you know ryan you know he's obsessed with pickleball and so oh, yeah I, he can talk about pickleball all day like the ins and outs like i don't know if you've noticed but like the, the funniest thing about ryan is like when you're playing rec with him and he like he does like a speed up, and like if you read it, he's like, "Why'd you know I was going there?" He's like always analyzing the game, oh, and it's like sure. it's what makes him so great. It's like he's you know fun to hang out with, and um, yeah, we're just excited. It's like it's like our I don't say our, our baby because we're not having babies together, but you know it is our our child. You know, there you go. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love them more than your own child, <laughs> Carlos. You're about to be a dad. I am about to be a dad. Cinco de Mayo. That's that's the due date, but yeah, my wife and I are very excited. Everyone's asking, is he going to play tennis? Like, no, he's going to play pickleball. Nice. Way more fun. <laughs> tennis won't be around probably in five years. You think it's going to be like, <laughs> you think this is, would you be, if you're the USTA, are you like legit pretty scared right now? No. I mean, sure, like here and there, like, you know, it might affect something, but like, I feel like tennis has been around so th th there's so much like history in tennis and like prestige and like you know like some of the best athletes have come from tennis like it's never gonna go away right I always say that jokingly I I, I love tennis uh, you know um, but yeah I mean I I I've always believed they go they can go hand in hand you know sure. like there are people that like right now hate pickleball they're like they think it's annoying it's loud it's right next to them but like in five years you know. 75 year old nancy won't be able to play tennis anymore huh. guess what she'll probably be banging some pickleballs so you know it's like that my my favorite my favorite thing is like when people trash on pickleball and then i watch them play tennis i'm like you should probably try her <laughs> right <laughs> it's usually some like 55 year old yeah. dude who's in finance that used to yeah. play tennis yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah 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 it's like you probably get a longer rally on the pickleball court 100 percent. yeah hey what's up bro Hey, you into pickleball at all? You into pickleball? No? All right. I've got a nice little side hustle going here. I basically just show up at pickleball courts and uh, I bring some products that they might need and I, I slang pickleball products. With pickleball being such a hot sport right now, there's a lot of different products coming out and it's hard to keep up with. So I just basically bring the products directly to the customer right here. Hey, hey bro. Hey, you looking thirsty out there. You need one of these ice shakers? You know, to be honest with you though, all I'm really doing is I just subscribe to the pickleball box 
and it comes straight to my door with all the hottest pickleball gear in here and it's like 250 dollars worth of stuff and i get it for 99 bucks hey donna i got that new feel of zip up you were asking about right here yeah that pickleball feel of zip up yeah yo these pickleball junkies man once you give them a taste of that new product that they got coming out they can't get enough of it hey tom weren't you asking about some pickleball socks man I got some socks right here for you, brand new. Yo, did y'all need some sunblock? Was somebody asking about some sunblock? Hey, what's up, bro? You wanna check out what all I got? Yeah, come check it out, man, check it out. Wait, 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 cops, dude, cops, cops. Be cool, be cool. What's up, officer? Good day, having a good day? Good. All right, check it out. Um. All right, at some point, we should probably talk about the tournament that happened last week. You guys catch any of the, the Masters? I did, yeah. Yeah? I, watched, I didn't watch a ton of it, but I, I rewatched some of the... Some of the matches that I heard were pretty good. Yeah, um, Genie's matches. Who's Genie Bouchard? Yeah, she she did well, didn't she? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, did you did you expect her to do better? No, I don't think anybody expected. No, because like to. even even when like yeah, it's exciting to see that she's coming to pickleball. Obviously, she was a huge name in tennis, but like I never saw one second of footage of her with a pickleball paddle in her hand leading right. the tournament so you're just like i hope it's like in the best way it's like a wake-up call for her to like try because she could obviously she has every tool to be a great pickleball player mm -hmm. i mean I, I wouldn't doubt it but like yeah so, some of the clips that are dirty <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah the name is fast yeah but, but like you gotta expect that you know memes could have gone even harder on her i feel yeah like. yeah yeah so jack how does it feel to now be the already you've been playing pickleball since 2013 how does it feel to be the second best jack in pickleball he's more <laughs> athletic for sure dubs i'd love to team up with him in dubs that'd be a good yeah, team what i said left side guy i'm looking for a left side guy wink wink, wink. <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah. that, that would, be would be a good team solid solid team who's he supposed to play i mean you and him would be better way better than him and colin plus then we'd get then we'd just immediately get like one or two buys even if we're like the 30th seed <laughs> we, we, we like we like kick somebody out. Did you watch Colin play though? He had, he's actually playing. Yeah, he's playing. A lot, a lot like, he, he's uh, obviously he's really good at singles. But like, I was watching. Like, I watched the first game against uh, Thomas and Riley, and like, he was countering really well on the right side. Mm -hmm. Like, he was like you know sliding well, and like, I feel like when he creates like chaos, it's kind of hard to see what's coming. He's so athletic, and mm -hmm. so he's 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 got to create chaos. He's got to create chaos. At the beginning of the point, yeah, like when they're hitting their fourth shots, or you know, or crashing off of a third, like that's where he wants the points to be super dynamic. I think he's got to chill out in the rally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, was he still was he still bouncing and moving a ton in uh, in men's doubles from the right side? Um, a, a little bit, no, no, not as much. I I I, I know we referred to because even like when I watched him at MLP and stuff, like he was a little bit too. Yeah, all over the place, but mm -hmm. I feel like he was a little, he was more controlled. Um, but yeah, towards the end, like they they flipped him and Colin played the left because they were kind of out of out of an answers there. But um, yeah, I mean it's it, it was fun to watch Jack play. Um, his forehand is just lethal. Oh my gosh, bro! I I, I want to start doing that. To be fair, like show the speed up and then do like yeah. an inside out. That that's a lot of a lot of shit talking between him and Riley too, and t even Thomas. Really? I feel like from the beginning, like, a couple points, like, Jack went for, like, three drives in a row, and Riley's just, like, pancaking, like, back, and he, like, he he was kind of giving it to him a little bit. It was fun to watch. Who started it? Riley started it? I can't remember who started it, but they were both, like, anytime they won a point, even even one time Jack, like, lost a point, uh, and was still, like, <laughs> he was, like, hey, it's my first term or something. Like, he was kind of giving it back, because, like, because Riley was, like, oh, just keep driving at me or something. I mean, that's the that's the spirit of a true shit talker. Yeah, to be able to talk. It's my shit. first tournament, man. No, no, no. But, but to, be able, to be able to <laughs> yeah. lose against that. Yeah, there's there's not much you can say. You know? Smoking and that's your first tournament. If you beat them, it's your first tournament. You shouldn't you shouldn't be losing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally a lose lose. But if my guy can talk shit while he's losing, he's a imagine, legend. Imagine, he's a, imagine when he's winning. <laughs> that's the sign of a true good. Crap talker. I've sworn a lot for the Game Plus Pro XR swear jar. Wait, is that still going on? Yeah, dude. You're at like a hundred bucks. Don't worry. Sean will, Sean will message you. No. <laughs> don't worry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't, you don't. You should have announced it. Okay. Well, guys. Starting we, now. No. No. Sorry, homie. 
We still have the Pro XR and Game Plus swear jar. So anytime that you swear, you owe 20 bucks to Game Plus. I'm sorry, to when? stop Alzheimer's now. And uh, and Game Plus and Pro XR are matching it. Oh, oh. So, dude, if you, God, if you throw out a cuss word, like, that's 60 bucks raised for all... Jack isn't a big cusser. No, not at all. Not at all. Not on the court. Not off the court. I'm not, I do not shit talk. I mean... Uh... Oh! 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 <laughs> dude, he's not having dinner for, like, three days. <laughs> Starving gullets, dude. You gotta remember that. Yeah, dude, they don't... Stop Alzheimer's Now doesn't accept meal swipes. <laughs> 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 maybe we can work something out with Sean. Maybe maybe we get to go to the the, the dining hall for <laughs> times. I'll get you Chick Fil A. You can you can pay in hot pockets. I think. <laughs> um. So let's see. How did the seating committee do for for the first go around? Genie and singles flopped. She lost. What would you and seven. She was. I don't think they gave her a seed, but they put her in the in basically a seated spot. Right. Oh, gotcha. Um. Jack had a real good run in in men's singles. Yeah, finished. Yeah, finished third. He beat, beat Con- uh, Burnett. Beat Connor in a really good match. Um, First game was four eleven. I was like, Connor's got this in the bag. Yeah, and then Jack just, or maybe Connor threw it just like what James did in the indoor. Jack's using a pretty soft paddle, isn't he? Yeah, he's using. <laughs> he's good. Imagine it with like something with more power. That'd be uh, scary. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I, I was thinking about this the other day, like, uh, what, when Adal was, like, in his prime, like, people always raved about, like, his RPMs on his ball. I think Jack was the only guy to ever beat his RPMs on his forehand. Jack had higher, yeah, I remember that stat. Jack had higher spin rates on his forehand than Rafa. He's just so whippy, it's, like, scary. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, pretty compact. Like, yeah. obviously, there's a lot going on, yeah. but... He gets a ton of power with a really compact swing. Yeah, yeah. The, the the people who like really just literally flare their elbow out. Just they get so much whip. Yeah. He's had that forever though. Like even when he was like twelve years old, he had a huge forehand. How does somebody like that not like screw up their wrist? Like he's so wristy with it. Do you think has he just developed so much strength in his wrist over the years, or what? Is having it loose does that prevent injuries? Probably. Yeah. Because he's so relaxed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would love to know, like, how Lucy's holding the, the paddle or, or the, he held the racket. Because it's just naturally, like, just whippy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's just crazy watching him, like, run around dinks. Yeah. Like, he's treating it like a mini, like a mini tennis court. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, him and him and Colin did surprisingly well. And, yeah. I mean, they, they had, they did probably as expected given their draw, right? Probably, but I think yeah. he looked, he looked better than I was expecting in, in men's doubles. I, I think he did better. He did probably about what I was expecting in in singles, like, and um, mixed doubles. Who ended up taking him out? Who did he play with? Mixed, Jack. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, Parento. Yeah, Parento. They lost to they lost to James and Anna, right? Yep, in the semis. Yeah, I didn't watch much of that, but I just know mm-hmm. that's what happened. Are but, bringing these like pro tennis players a healthy and good way to bring exposure into pickleball? Yeah, I think so. Because especially um, bringing someone like Jack or like even Donald Young, like all those guys have a lot of a lot of buddies on the ATP tour that like, I mean, I'm sure like people like Nick Kyrgios are probably like, I'm not saying they're going to play pickleball, but they're definitely intrigued by it. They're like, dude. I saw some clips of, of Kyrgios dinking around yeah, a little bit recently. He would be nasty. For sure. He would be nasty. Yeah, he would change. You would change. Yeah. Pickleball. I think Jack. I think Jack would be a better is going to be a better pickleball player than Nick. Yeah, probably. I think Nick. Nick and Jack yeah. have sort of similar tennis games. Yeah, we're like super like loose, like just like go out swinging. Like you, you know, like they're they're, they're never going to play like tight. They're never, they're never going to play not to lose. They're always like just going for it, mm-hmm. which makes it when they're on, they're like so fun to watch. And um, bringing that to the pickleball world would be like insane, but. No, I think, you know, especially it's good for them to like, if if Jeannie Bouchard won everything she ever played in pickleball, it would make pickleball look like a joke. Right. But I think just given like that, that good of a tennis player comes to pickleball and like struggles at the beginning is good. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, it's it's good to have the, the contrast, right? Sure. Like it's good to see, okay, 
this isn't so difficult that I can't do it. Yeah. Right? And it's also good to say, okay, you can't just waltz in having never really played and expect to, like, do decently. Yeah. So it's it's good that we have our Sam Queries and our Jeannie Bouchards. It's also great that we have Jack who's doing really well right away. Yeah. yeah. Not not you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm a dick. Discern how far you can get in pickleball by just having a forehand. To be fair, you yeah. can be a top 15, 20 player and have a subpar backhand but a Ferrari forehand yeah. and still be a very good player. Yeah. I like do you think he's obviously it's cool to watch him run around it, but you think he's overdoing it? What? Running around back in dings to hit a forehand. Yeah, I've I've seen him doing it in in doubles. Yeah, I know, but you think he's overdoing it? Overdoing it? Do you think if he just like developed like just like a a decent uh decent back and curl, he wouldn't have to like recover so much to the middle to like open up the for you know, to cover with the forehand? Yeah, but he's so good at... Re- I mean, that's what he's done his entire tennis career. Yeah. Run around, people try and go over to his forehand, and then he goes and gets it. Like, if you run around it, you can really generate some pretty good angles, especially with how good his forehand is and how much spin and power he can generate. Like, it op- it definitely opens up the, the court. So, I mean, him on the... Him on the left side is... Is a... It's a tough... I feel like him on the left side would be somebody that could push Ben and Colin because he loves his little inside out forehand. He can pull Ben out wide or keep Ben honest out wide. And then if he runs around it, he can actually, you know, he could attack Colin pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you see the, you see the parallel with James and his Tui. Mm-hmm. James can pull, can pull Ben out wide with that Tui shape mm-hmm. as well as speed up wherever he wants. Right. You need somebody who can speed up from the side of the court to beat Ben and Colin. You can't speed up at him through the, from the middle of the court. You need to have a little bit of an angle to, to work with. Jack can create that by running around his, his backhand. And I think James can create that just by rolling his backhand. So, Who would be Jack's like perfect partner, ideal partner? I actually think you, I think matchup-wise, I feel like you'd be a good partner with him because you can come in and cover your your his middle right with your lefty forehand and then you can be creative on the on the other side um shake and bake yeah some shake and bake action i mean if somebody has a drive like that you put like pablo or rafa or any good lefty that poaches like that it's you know it's game changing yeah i I feel like yeah i feel like jack wants a dynamic right side player like he doesn't want to be lulled into the like long dinking rallies um, I'm sure he'd be fine at it, but like m- my guy's not out here to grind him. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Um, I don't know. Who do you think? Wh- who's his best matchup on the right side, partner? I I was gonna say like a. I mean, ideally, it would be like a lefty. Yeah, because then like you can just have him create a lot from like way out wide, and then just n- not you know still be safe if someone covering the middle. And then here's the thing, a uh. A chaotic or a stable lefty? Like, do you, does Jack want to be the one speeding up, and then his partners? I think he does. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think, I think that would be the way to go. Because if you have too much chaos, it's hard to, to like sustain that for a whole two out of three. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I sure. I even saw it against Riley and Thomas. Like, they started creating some chaos, um, and then they, I think they lost eleven eight. But then going to the second game, it was just like so mm-hmm. quick. So. Which is why it's so hard to obviously beat the Johns Bros. Oh yeah, like they they'll, they'll dink forever. The only way you beat them is with chaos. Yeah, and it's so tough to do that with a long time horizon. Ooh. What about um obviously obviously Thomas and Riley? I thought played really well together. What about Jack and Thomas? Because Thomas is Thomas is really good from that right side, and you can't just pick on him, right? You're not going to end up in a long dinking rally. And you saw Thomas play really good right with Riley. Mm-hmm. Thomas was coming over like to the middle of the court and even onto Riley's side of the court to come hit forehand <laughs> yeah. right? Um, that 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 would be a good team, really good team. They, they would both have so much variety from from both sides for sure. It'd be like just like okay, it, when, when I have it, this is your role, and, and vice versa. It'd be the hardest hitting team in pickleball by yeah. far. I on one point, it was harder like 
to actually listen to what they were saying to each other. But on one point, Thomas like goes for like a super hard forehand drive and just like misses it by like, super wide. And Jag was like, nice forehand or something. <laughs> Even though he was getting destroyed. <laughs> he was still like talking crap to him. I was like, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, what'd you guys think of Riley and Thomas? They played together maybe one time before. This uh, is their second time. Second time? Yeah. I don't remember they, what they, they played like the finals. Um the PPA tour finals or whatever that was. Like the top what was the top eight teams, top sixteen teams? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're a fun team to watch. Um yeah, I don't know what you guys think, but yeah, I like it. It's unique, yeah, sure. Which is exactly what I love seeing. I'd yeah. rather not watch just twenty dinks every rally. Yeah, and with with Riley there in general, Riley just makes it entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rally with the Zane paddle. Yeah, no, he he played well with it right away. He's not signed either, so he's playing. He's a free man. He can play with whatever the hell he wants. Wow, I wonder why he picked your paddle. It's Tell him, Zane, because it's goaded. <laughs> A great it's, paddle. it's the paddle that makes everybody better except for Zane. <laughs> 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 I think memes made that made that paddle. Oh, the, really? the, the paddle or the he they made that meme. The paddle that makes everybody ten percent better except for Zane. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you feel about that? I was really hurt. <laughs> really? Like when people called um Jack Mophead in, in high school bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I used to wear a bun. No, no. I, stop it. You're a bun guy? Bro, I used to go like this. Samurai style? And wear it like this, dog. And you thought that it would bully you less? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Last uh, last results. Well, actually, we have a couple still. Dylan won a freaking gold. I think it was his first PPA gold medal. It might be his first singles medal. No, no, not first PPA gold medal, but first PPA singles for sure. Might be his first singles gold medal, to my knowledge. First one of the year. He was down big, too, in that third game against uh, Federico. It was like 9-3. Yeah. Something like down that. 9-3, I was like, oh, man, this is over. Was he just clubbing forehands or what? Dude, his, uh, like, back two-handed backhand, like, kind of roll. Uh, cross-court? Like, cross-court kind of, like, not passing shot, but like, uh, kind of, like, hybrid drive. It's, like, very good. You can tell he's worked on that two-handed back for, like, someone that, this is like so overset, but for someone that didn't play tennis, like he's really grinding to like you know be a better singles player, and he covers the court so well. And like yeah, he's athletic. He does not look like yeah. that fast, but dude gets to everything. Yeah, so quick and fed. You fed with the new Yola paddle. Yeah, is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he beat shot sock like one in three or something like that? <laughs> yeah, that was quick. They gave him a spanking. Yeah, <laughs> was Jack talking shit in that one? I don't know. Can't remember. You'd have to. Yeah. I'll watch it back. Report. Yeah. Report back to you. Let us know. <laughs> um, what you guys think of the the new, couple new things? New ball. How do you feel like that impacted things? I mean, obviously I wasn't at a tournament, but I have played with the ball. Um, it seems like it favorites like people that rip, rip the ball more than not. Um, obviously, you didn't play either, but we have played with it a few times and Seems like it doesn't crack, but it does go out around pretty quick. <laughs> 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 so or amount, but probably the same as a Dura. So it still it still has the same the same issues as you typically see with a Dura. Mm-hmm. Um, but the color helps. Yeah, care. the color is nice. Yeah. I'd almost go to. I'd, I'd almost say like, I think it goes out around more than a Dura. But like, I suppose if if you're a rec player, I'd rather have my ball go out of round than just break break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're swapping after every game, it's fine. Because then, I mean, like there were so many missed returns in the Masters specifically, just because it kicks or it doesn't kick. And I mean, if you're swapping them out faster, then it won't be an issue. I feel like I, the more like the more action you put on the ball, like the less it bounces. I'd say the more variation of bounce you get. Yeah. Sometimes you get the ones that really kick. Yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. you get the ones that don't bounce. And it does seem like this ball spins a little bit more. Yeah. So I do think there's more bad bounces. But I don't know if that's a product of the the ball or just the additional spin. Even on a Dura, you get more bad bounces on s- balls that are spinning more, right? Like my the chainsaw serve, I would get some that would kick way too much. I would get some that would bounce downwards with the that's, same swing, and everything. With the same swing and everything, the more spin you put on that ball, the more likely you are to get a bad bounce, in my opinion. And I think this ball is spinnier, kind of goes out around. You're getting a lot of bad bounces with this thing. Yeah. Um, and then the serve rule was a disaster. 
I think to I think everybody expected the server rule to be a disaster. I think we're all excited that we <laughs> that we weren't there for that one. Um, I I have um I have a video of and I'm just, we'll overlay this or whatever. I don't know how to do that. Jamie's not here, but I have a video of refs talking to like four players about how to serve. Like tell showing them how to serve, and, like and, as and they're on the court. I heard that like refs were like saying different things too. Oh yeah, and and like some refs were calling like slight movement up, you know, from when you were like dropping the ball. Some refs were not, so it was just a disaster. It was a very inconsistent application of this new rule, yeah. from what I understand. Yeah, because e- even when you're dropping it, your shoulder naturally goes up. Like yeah. your arm naturally goes up. So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, when some refs call that, it's complete BS, even though you're dropping the ball. Yeah. You know what would solve all this? Drop surf chainsaw. Chainsaw. <laughs> Everyone has to do the chainsaw. <laughs> Everyone has to saw. Yes, we need to make more fun stuff legal. What else? What else? Pop off, King. Yeah. The scoop. Um, the scoop. Yeah, dude. You're, you're the goose of the scoop. I'm saying two paddles. I'm saying um, the, 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 there's so many unique things that we could just, that we that you could do like just for an exhibition. You, you, you go out. Unlimited grit. Oh my! No level, no, 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 no max grit level. That'd be wild. That'd be fun. That would maybe be fun. <laughs> that'd be fun. That'd be fun way for more, a little bit. Way more fun than one tournament. Every paddle company just comes out with a paddle to make it the grittiest possible. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, what if you had one one tournament where everybody could just make whatever paddle they wanted? Yeah. They could. That'd be wild. I like it. I like. I do. I generally think that. You should be able to hit with whatever body part you want. Like, however you need to get that ball over the the net, like, go for it. If it's your other hand, like... Your calf. Your calf. Your chest. Head. Header. <laughs> header. <laughs> header. My shot w- from from Austin of this Dreamland. here at Dreamland would go from the worst pickleball shot ever to the best, best pickleballs retroactively. Yeah. I like it. Um, Yeah. Well... Stay tuned for some of that. Well, we're gonna. <laughs> I do have. Bro, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Lab. I know I said the lab, bro. The amount of content that would come out of that would be. That would be pretty fun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've got I've got something cooking in that regard. Um. All right. <laughs> the only other thing that that I have is, you see Travis going for a nasty on Jack, missing it like in the middle of that. No, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't. Committed the cardinal sin of Nasty Nelsons. Yeah, if you're gonna miss a Nasty Nelson, miss it long. I mean, you gotta miss it at a hit, a hit over a their head. Yeah, 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 hit a fan rather than one hundred percent. My God, you can't miss. He did. He called his shot on the Tennis Sucks podcast, and then hit it into the net. That's Travis, dude. You got to be better than that. <laughs> be better. I mean, like respect for calling your shot, but like I'm almost just gonna say, I execute. Think, I think no, no. I, I think he wussed out. I think he didn't want to hit him, and so he said, "Okay, I called my shot. I gotta, I gotta hit it into the net now, because I can't be the guy that Nasty Nelson." Right, right, right. Jack, my tennis buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I think Travis, you come at me. I think you just wussed out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think Travis was out. Anybody gonna refute that? Oh no. Yeah, maybe maybe like mid swing. Mid swing. He, he felt he bad. Contemplated. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can see that. What round was that? Second. I think so, right? E- they. It was mixed, e- correct? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. for him, though. <laughs> Good for him. Um. All right. We had one other other question why did i skip the masters i was at an indian wedding in uh in cancun it was wild it was fun any fun dance yeah what was the most wild part um the most wild part was when the groom rode a horse to meet his bride <laughs> and the, the all the groomsmen were carrying the bride on a on a on a bed that was like elevated and the groom was coming in on a horse it's called the barat and uh, they were like blasting Indian music at this all-inclusive resort at like 8 a.m. <laughs> it was wild. It was, at 8 a.m. Yeah, early starts. Yeah. Dang. Um. So yeah, that was. Uh, Jimmy said it may have been a political statement. It was not. I was just at a <laughs> at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny. All right, boys. 
Anything else you guys got? What's your next tournament thing? I think I'm playing the the Desert Ridge in in a couple weeks. What are you playing with? I don't know yet. You taking uh, applications? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Are you got, are you boys both going to Punta Gorda this year? They're uh next yeah this week? year yeah we're going this year. Nice dude. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> who, who are you yeah, always going? playing with this week? I'm just playing men's with uh my uncle John, Sinkola. Oh, nice. Yeah. Are you ever going to play mix? Dude, I was supposed to play mix. But my partner couldn't play. We, we were signed up and everything. Shout out Kate Fahey. Come on, play with me. Kate. Wait, come on. That's both. Like she couldn't, uh, you know, merge your stuff. But mm, got it. Yeah. And then I'm playing with Richard Livernese. Okay. Another young next gen kid. And then Emily Ackerman. Okay. Nice. Nice. Partners. Yeah. Is Richard going to be. Th- solid he's got he's tall he's athletic like yeah he's he's got everything for sure just like just like roscoe you know those that next generation of players who are just developing their game just for pickleball now and they they they're athletic they have all the shots now they're at this richard the nicest pickleball player in the world by far on the board the guy compliments everyone Mm -hmm. in the facility does he really he's playing yeah you could hit an overhead straight at him and it'll genuinely like... He's like, oh, great shot. Yeah. <laughs> He's the best, bro. I played him really one nice. time, and he was like so fired up, but then he was also saying, like, nice shot. And I thought he was just being a dick. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> was, I know. But now, now I kind of feel bad. No, he's like... <laughs> you know, when, when, when I first... When I thought I, he was being sarcastic. When Maybe I first, that's my own lens of looking through the world yeah. like an asshole, but... <laughs> when I first played him, I was like, this guy's either the nicest guy, and like, good for him. Or like the biggest dick, <laughs> no, legitimate. Yeah, 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 just the guy. The first judgment, and it's <laughs> for sure tough to make. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was just like trolling he, me. He's got so much energy. Yeah. You have to talk to him after, and then yeah. he'll, you know, you'll realize like, oh, like you're nice, like you're legitimately nice. Yeah. Nice, mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. All right, um, sweet. Well, good luck in Punta Gorda, boys, and uh, yeah, that's the the pickle pod. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, dollar has gone on